This is one of the things I love about traveling. There are stories everywhere. You know, you, you park at a Home Depot overnight and... Maximalist minibus with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! Right now I'm at Home Depot in Fishkill, New York, which that's, that's a weird name. Fishkill. It, it comes from two Dutch words, vish, which, <laughs> V-I-S. I don't speak Dutch, so I don't know if that's how you say it. But anyway, it means fish in Dutch, and kill, which I'm pretty sure I am saying right, which means creek in Dutch, so I guess there was a lot of fish in the creek. I ended up here because the camping place where I was going to stay was all closed off. That's one of the hazards of trying to find free or cheap camping on the East Coast. There's not a lot of it to begin with, and it's seasonal, and the season is defined differently in different places. Some places open April 1st, some the 15th, some May 1st, some are even open in March, but it's not a lot of times clear until you get there. It was kind of late by the time I figured out that I wasn't going to be able to camp there. So rather than stumbling around in the woods trying to find some place to tuck in, I just decided to go retail for the night. So I checked out Walmart, but they had no overnight parking signs and didn't seem super friendly. So I ended up here at Home Depot. I didn't ask if I could stay because they were closed already when I got here, but there were other overnighters here. So it seemed like seemed like it was okay. There was a trailer, there was a Class A, and um, a couple of vans. So I stayed. This Home Depot is next to this junked up, closed down place that looks like it's kind of become a dumping ground. And at first I thought maybe it was, maybe it had been a Kmart or something, but obviously it's been closed a long time. And you know, I'm kind of a research junkie. So I had to look it up and I found out that this used to be the Duchess Mall. It's all part of the plan and you know it. The Duchess Mall opened in 1974, and it was the first shopping mall in Duchess County. But before that, it was a Revolutionary War encampment and supply depot. It was actually a really important spot, you know, with a prison for captured soldiers and a hospital, and there were even like 300 or so soldiers that were buried here. The, the part that the mall covered was barracks and parade ground. It wasn't the cemetery, but the rest of it, the whole property is up for commercial development at this point. And there's a group that's looking to save the area, which really hasn't even been explored archeologically much at all yet. I always find it kind of amazing when I come across these historic spots that have basically been kind of forgotten about and turned into something else. I don't know if you remember the video I did about Gallows Hill in Salem, Mass, where the people accused of witchcraft were hanged, but that's basically the backside of a Walgreens now. But getting back to the mall, right from the beginning, the Duchess Mall had some problems. I found a quote from one Dutchess County official saying that mall was a dog from the start. I mean, it looks on paper like a great location, and this part of the state was really up and coming then, but it was just like slightly off. It was basically on the wrong side of the highway. This side of 84 wasn't super populated then. I don't know if it is now, but the people on the other side of 84, they didn't really cross the road. They were more likely to go the other direction, like toward Poughkeepsie, than to come over onto this side. And on top of that, the design of the mall was kind of like almost outdated before it even opened, you know, because it was like the old school malls, you know, where there's, it's shipped like a, a barbell. There's an anchor store on each end that's like the weight, and then the smaller stores are in the middle. And the so-called anchors weren't big corporations either. They were, they're fairly large stores, but they were big local stores. And as the various anchors went out of business and went bankrupt, Maze was one of them. I shop right and service merchandise was here at one point. Um, they would get replaced by another store that eventually would go bankrupt too. And that of course made life pretty difficult for the stores that were smaller, the ones in the middle, because malls really rely on those anchors. By the 80s, malls were basically becoming gallerias. The, the whole model changed. And instead of two anchor stores, places like the Poughkeepsie Galleria have five anchor stores. The anchors were big chains too, so they weren't so volatile business-wise. And also the newer malls had multiple levels, just a ton more stores, big skylights in the ceiling, huge food courts with a ton of variety. Oh, and uh, that Walmart where I stopped at the beginning before I came over here. I don't know if this is still true, but back then, during the mall's heyday, it was the busiest Walmart in the Northeast. And it was only about a half mile away. So yeah, there was a lot of competition. 
When I was poking around, I found this Wall Street Journal article from 1998, and the title of the article was "Ancient Mall Reveals How Humans Used to Shop." The mall was still open then, but、um, the article says that there were more geese than cars in the parking lot. Eventually, all the stores shut down, but there was still a flea market here on the weekends, and there's actually a movie about the flea market called "Fishkill Flea." There were lots of suggestions about. Repurposing the space. Some of the ideas that were floated in that 1998 article were an ice skating rink, an indoor soccer arena, an office park. Eventually, there was a big announcement that the mall was going to be turned into this metro center, which was a big multi-use facility with office space, childcare center, lots of restaurants, recreational activities. It was a big plan, and it had a big price tag, which is why it never actually ended up happening. But One of the most interesting proposals, interesting to me anyway, for the renovation of the space was, and this was a finalist in an architectural contest called Dead Malls. I would love to see the winner because this one's really good. But the proposal was to turn the Duchess Mall into a women's prison. Sure, I can see that. Mall, prison makes complete sense to me. The American dream. In 2006, part of the mall was demolished to make the Home Depot, but these creepy buildings over here were left standing, along with another one on the other side. That one became a satellite campus for the Dutchess County Community College. It didn't open right away because of COVID, but it's open now. This side, though, still creepy. This is one of the things I love about traveling. There are stories everywhere. You know, you park at a Home Depot overnight, and hey, it's a revolutionary encampment. It's a trailblazing but ultimately obsolete mall. It's a flea market, potential prison, and here I thought it was just an old Kmart. Oh, and there's a nine-hole golf course behind it all. Well, we're gonna get out of here, and we're gonna head someplace that is,、uh, yeah, a little less creepy. I'll tell you about it in the next video, assuming that we get there without any snags. Oh, and this video here, this has、uh, some stuff in it about my love affair with Home Depot. Check it out. Okay, ready, Captain?